Good morning, judges. Yours, 3.4 consultant. My name is Jordan. This is Natalia, Justin, and James. And here, we're talking about Latin, uh, Latin American uh, youth centers. Now, before we start, we need to look at and understand what our objective is exactly. So this is what exactly we have to look to accomplish. Really, we want to find a way to standardize the volunteer recruitment process while also ensuring that we have to diversify our revenues. Now, to do this, we want to understand the company in greater detail. So let's take a look at the LAYC. Uh, there's 50 plus programs that are serving 8,300 students or youth in the Washington, D.C. area. And they're also looking to possibly expand that reach to places like Philadelphia and the Richmond area. Now, with this, we want to look at maybe the national, state, and citywide statistics to understand why we need, why LAYC needs to exist. So with that, we have one in seven families are living below the poverty line. Uh, 3,000, or for the last 30 years, on a national wide level, we have not seen a change in uh, poverty rates. And lastly, 1,500, uh, 1,500 families will become homeless annually, and that is for uh, the Richmond area. So clearly there's the opportunity for LAYC to expand with that and help families continue to be safe, sound, and secure. Now, we want to show what LAYC is exactly doing, and Jane will talk about this. So, you already have a huge impact. As you can tell, there's many youth that have gone through your program, have gone through it successfully, are contributing members of society, and you've significantly improved their lives. There's one quote that really resonated with us, and it's from 21 year old Hunter. And she said that case managers are generally there to give you resources, but sometimes you just need somebody to talk to. Just need somebody to be there for you when you're struggling with something. And so, with that, we wanted to look at some of the benefits and experiences that your programs provide for the youths, as well as look at the other side, look at the clients or the youths in this case, and look at some of the needs, the wants, and the fears that you're addressing. So, in this case, things like we feel the need of safety and security, wanting to better their life. However, they're afraid of retaliation or uh, community disconnect. And what we found is by combining these two, we actually needed to address further psychological factors that affect the youth. In doing this, we decided to look at the human development psychology model, known as Maslow's hierarchy. Maslow's hierarchy takes a holistic perspective, just as LAYC takes a holistic perspective to you. Um, as you can see here, in order to understand uh, the Maslow's hierarchy, the fundamental uh, bottom pyramid must be met in order to uh, move up. So, first physical needs, then safety, love and belonging, achievement, and self-actualization, which is achieving your ultimate potential. We also categorize some of your services based on which areas they address in this human psychology development model. There aren't other substitutes to what you do. Um, there are other after-school programs, job employment programs, and internship programs. However, we think that what LAC is doing, as well as the other members or other organizations, is a much better outlook than the streets and the bleak uh, future that they offer. We wanted to keep your mission in mind. So creating a future where all youth pursue their dreams. We kept this in mind when we were doing our brainstorming of our analysis. So in terms of options, we came up with a wide variety of options. Um, we listed lots that we needed to refine our analysis and focus on key ones. The way we did that is we focused on our model and tailored it to the psychological development and related to youth, as this is a key outcome of some of your programs. So that being said, uh, we refined it to five key strategies. The first three are in reference to the best practice replication unit and designing that in a, a specific way. And then we also have two other options, uh, but we're going to explain all of these in detail for you. So the first one is the positive youth development program. This is a customizable program. Um, it's a set curriculum, but you can tailor it to specific organizations. And it's a teaching role. So using your expertise, you can explain to people the processes, um, how you're dealing with uh, troubled youth, and those sorts of things, and use, utilizing uh, your competitive advantage in that sense. We also evaluated pros and cons at the bottom there in uh, doing our evaluation as well. So we also have Impacto uh, is Revival. So this is a consulting idea that never really took off the ground. Uh, we want to develop a working model of the consulting piece. So we'd work with organizations to identify their salsa and their competitive advantage, as well as solve uh, common issues for um, nonprofits and other agencies. 
Fomitor Pathway is a more specific program tailored at high risk youth. So we want to expand our reach um, to different programs and develop a customizable one that we can adapt, again, utilizing our skills and expertise uh, and helping more youth beyond just within our own organization. So now what we need to look at some of the other ones that are outside the best practice for education. So with the first one, we are, we need, we're going to need volunteers. We need to see volunteers grow. We need to find a way to make it sustainable. So that's what we devise a way that we can create a volunteer database and look into the software. We can easily do this with Excel and Google Forms. We want to keep the cost as minimal as possible. We understand this is a nonprofit. We can't be affording high tech Oracle like software. Um, so with that, we hope that will, that will help us be able to continue to build and maintain relationships with uh, a volunteer so we can still be able to address some future issues of like volunteer turnover. Tur turnover. Um, now, the last one we have is the Art Auction Gala. So really what we want to do here is we really want to connect your donor to the, the people where their money is going. Uh, so we want to take high talented youth who are in painting, music, design aspects, we want to auction off some of their work. We hope this will raise some fund raise, uh, raise some funds for the uh, LEYC and uh, once again connect donors to the, to the clients of the LEYC service. Now, just to recap, we looked at all of these and said, well, LEYC can realistically do all of them, but we wanted to make sure that it was realistic. So how we did that is we just needed to stagger it all of them. So that will discuss in our presentation. As you can see here, we've chosen all five strategies, and they are implemented over a three-year period. Firstly, we will be moving into the positive use development. So uh, we do want to make this model to be replicatable so that we can uh, license it and work with other companies uh, to, to, or in organizations to uh, continue to expand this. It will need to have a launch and pilot program as it is brand new, and it will also need to have a feedback loop. After that, we can continuously find other organizations that we can strategically align with. Moving forward, we'll be moving to the promoter pathway. Um, again, we're wanting to formalize contracts within this situation, as well as making the program, again, replicatable. Then we'll want to take the prep time, teach time, and again, a feedback loop afterwards. Uh, then we'll also be working into our volunteer recruitment. We want to try and entice university students to be interns with us. Um, after that, we will streamline the volunteer processes that you currently have. We will also implement a standardized training program, as well as finding volunteer feedback afterwards. Now, feeding off of the um, standardization of volunteer recruitment, we wanted to talk about the auction implementation. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to have to seek out the youth who can participate, who can create the items that you're going to auction off. Then you want to communicate with the public, communicate with the donors, say, hey, this is the event, this is when it's happening, and here's how you can get involved. And then finally, like I said, we are feeding back into that volunteer. You're going to want to recruit and train and coordinate volunteers who can do everything from planning all the way to the successful execution of the event. And lastly, we want to talk about Impacto. So if you notice, the first uh, few implementations were actually happening in year one. We left uh, Impacto until year three. And that's because we believe it takes a little bit more planning, a little bit more focus, and therefore we want you to make sure that you successfully implement other programs before you focus your time on Impacto. First thing you're going to do is you're going to seek out um, potential internal candidates. We believe that the best people for you to utilize is actually your program graduates. So you're going to seek them out, you're going to seek the talents that they have. You're then going to train them. And finally, this is an ongoing process, so you're going to, based on demand, you're going to increase your staffing capabilities as well as your clientele base. So we throw in a lot of implementation info at you, so let's do a really quick overview. So as we said, Promotor Pathway and Positive Youth Development are ongoing programs that are going to start in year one right away. Your internship process and volunteer recruitment is something you can do year over year. The first year is going to take a little bit longer, and then afterwards it will be a little bit uh, less time. Your art auction is something you can also do uh, year over year, depending on how successful you find it. And finally, impact is happening in year three. This is our financial analysis in terms of uh, year one, two, and three with our proposed strategies. And as you can see, the revenue is um, increasing uh, quite exponentially. So with this risk, the, uh, with this implementation, we're facing risk. Of course, we have low loss during possibility. However, we built a flexible price model that hopefully can mitigate a lot of that. Um, high turnover. We really believe that our volunteer database management system will really help with that. Um, and data mismanagement. Uh, we really need to make sure a lot of our volunteers are trained with privacy and respect, especially if they're working with the database management. So finally, just a really quick recap. We talked about some of the benefit experiences, me 
needs and how they all feed into the youth and the services we provide. We provided you with five options that we believe will make sure that you're successful. And finally, we provided you with an implementation and risk mitigation strategies. And with that, we'd like to open the floor for questions. Especially one of the ones where our HR, uh, we wanted to basically have a volunteer who's going to manage a lot of that. Uh, so we need a volunteer coordinator. Currently, uh, LAYC does not have one, and that's something that a lot of nonprofits have, and it's a very huge requirement. Um, so with that, we're hoping to find a university student who's more than capable, we find, that they will have a lot of the, especially if they're in the field of business, if their major is in HR, that's even better. Um, now, the big incentivizer behind that is what they will achieve from that and gain from that, the experience alone will basically accelerate them into a career of either in the nonprofit industry or in the actual work world of private industry or public sector. Uh, so look, the incentive for them there is that their resume is just it's going to be exponential. So it's going to basically give them a lot of responsibility. However, uh, we believe that there are candidates out there who will be able to rise up to that. In terms of the positive youth development program, uh, the model that we came up with was uh, kind of two tier. So there would be a facilitator fee, almost in the sense of the, we kind of consider it as a consultant, the person who's educating in a way. Uh, that would be $100 per hour. And then there'd be a price per student attending the program or the class of $150 per hour. And so the set client fee, uh, based on the 42 hour duration of the whole program, that uh, would be $6,450. Um, with Promotor Pathway, uh, it's a little um, more inexpensive actually. Uh, there's a facilitator fee of $75 per hour uh, with that. And we estimated that it would be approximately uh, 40 hours depending on um, the program that you're doing. So the client fee is 3000 So the reason actually that we um, targeted the pricing cheaper on the Promotor Pathway model is the fact that um, this one is really for high risk uh, youth. So we don't want to um, uh, limit the amount of people who are willing to utilize our expertise. We want to make a direct impact on these high kids, uh, high risk kids that really matter. Uh, whereas the positive youth development program is tailored to a more broader audience and not necessarily the high risk um, side of it. So we, we based it on uh, consulting fees, uh, a lot of it. So we found that the range for the nonprofit consulting fees uh, were anywhere between $75 per hour uh, and $200 <coughs> per hour uh, for averages uh, in the DC kind of area. So we tailored our facilitator fees on that model. And then if we look at uh, Impacto here, um, we went with an hourly consulting fee as well as $100. And we want to price it on the lower scale because um, we're getting into this, we're starting out. Um, we got to develop our expertise before we can really charge um, higher values. Research. 
had to look and understand, well, who, who is doing this, right? That's, of course, that's a logical question we had to ask ourselves. And what we were finding is that how LAYC is promoting it and doing and pushing their product or their service, and the ones we just highlighted, the consulting and the PYD, is all, it's unique. It, it really is. Now, PYD, we understand, is, is something that is in a lot of the nonprofits already. However, how we are promoting PYD and how we're, we're, we're basically doing it different and stronger. It's more, it's, it's more personal, really. It, it, it really helps um, the client in a lot and <coughs> build a stronger uh, PYD program as opposed to our con con competition. It's not so much. The competition will give uh, like a basic, like, oh, here, this applies to everyone. Whereas PYD, our PYD program is, oh, hey, we've identified these as your areas, as these are your issues. Um, like, this is your personal PYD built for you. Uh, so that really, like, that, that's really where we're, the competitive advantage is for um, LAYC. <coughs> this and there's actually a fair amount of nonprofits that already do uh, similar programs and our idea is that uh, we want to connect these youth the youth will be there with their art talking about themselves talking about their lives and the um, struggles that they've gone through and sort of where they've gotten to so although they are make doing it for free we are introducing them to a world of donors potential employers so we believe that there is still going to be a return on investment there. It's just not going to be uh, actual monetary return, but rather we're hoping that um, we'll be able to uh, allow them to secure future employment or future opportunities uh, through that. Uh, we are also going to be pitching this to the youth as, hey, you know, we want to keep these programs running. If there's a certain program that you're really passionate about, we can allocate these funds, the, the profits off of your specific artwork to the program that you're in, to the program that you're passionate about, and hopefully uh, sort of teach them that philanthropy as well by giving back.
is to have already taken one of our programs. So. So, we've fed you a lot of information. There's been so much stuff thrown at you. I really want to bring it back and talk to you a little bit more about Hunter. So as I've mentioned earlier, Hunter's 21 years old. She's gone through several programs. And what you did is you just, not just step into her life, you saved it. And the reason for that is Hunter was actually homeless for a prolonged period of time because after her mother fell ill due to heavy drug use, she had to move in with her dad, who she hasn't talked to in years, and his new wife, she became depressed, she wound up on the street. And that's when she met you. And what she did is she actually went through several of your programs. She first entered your residential program, which allowed her to come off the street. It provided her with shelter. It provided her with food. And that addressed her basic physical needs. She then took your workforce investment program. And that taught her the basic qualities uh, that she needed, the qualifications and the skills to obtain employment. She's still employed. She's working part-time. She's doing great. And what those two did is they provided her with the safety and the security that she needed to then look further, look beyond just the homelessness and just the fact that she, you know, is underprivileged and address some of her psychological needs. That's when she realized that she is battling depression. And she decided to join your Promotor Pathway program. She's still part of the program. She loves it so much that she wants to be a part of it once she completes it. She was able to find that human connection, that friend, that support system that she was missing for so long. And once she received that, she then moved into your BARD at LAYC program. She's now taking six college credits in humanities. And once she completes that, she's looking to move on and do post-secondary education. She's becoming a self-actualized human being. And what you did to for her, once again, is you addressed every need that she had. Now, Promoter Pathway specifically, I want to focus on for a moment because she loves the program so much, she wants to get into it, she wants to get back into it. So these ROIs were done based on 20 uh, students or 20 youths in the Promoter Program Pathway. And um, uh, the net fiscal contribution to the economy alone from the 20 youths would be $5.7 million. Their increased revenue just for the 20 youths would be $2.08 million. And finally, the 20 youths that are in the program now could potentially have been juvenile delinquents otherwise and could have wound up in juvenile detention otherwise. By putting them in a program, by taking them off the streets, and by providing them that support system, we've s you've saved the state $1.76 million. That's huge. Simply by providing these youth with a support system and a friend. Now, tying it all back to Hunter, by allowing Hunter to complete her GED, you reduce her poverty potential by 50%. By then allowing her to join BARD at LAYC, hopefully she'll be able to attain further education. Her poverty level then is reduced by further 15%. And finally, by combining all those things and through Promoter Pathway, you know, we hope that she can build meaningful relationships we hope that she can get married, she can have kids, she can have a family, she can have a support system in the future. By combining all of those things together, you have now uh, reduced her poverty potential by 70%. Now, where does this leave her? She's a self-actualizing uh, human being. She's safe, she's secure, she has housing, she has food, she has an education, she has a job. None of these things would be possible without you, without LAYC which is why it is so vital that your programs continue happening and they continue improving And because there's other hunters out there. There's other youth that are in dire need of your assistance that could turn into success stories and will break that cycle, break that cycle of poverty and that psychological uh, concerns. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to thank you for the time, taking time to listen to us and we'd like to conclude our presentation.